Hey guys, welcome to my new video. I've been using Galaxy Note 9 for last two weeks and so far my experience has been amazing. I really have to congratulate Samsung for making this awesome device for 2018. The best thing about this device is its battery life which can easily last up to one and a half to two days if you're not using it heavily. The camera is exceptional but yes you get the same camera in Galaxy S9 Plus. S Pen was always good but with the addition of S Pen Bluetooth functionality Samsung has taken it to next level. There are some really cool tips and tricks I would like to share with you in this video. So let's get started but before I start kindly subscribe to my channel and also hit the bell icon so you will get notified every time I post a new video. So suppose your device is freezing or any kind of issues you are having, touch is not working. All you have to do is press the power button and the volume down button together. So you press them together for 10 seconds and the device will reboot and it will solve all the issues which you were having. Any freezing issues or any, any kind of unresponsive touch. So let's do it. Power and volume down button, maybe 10 seconds. It will take a screenshot but you keep pressing them. So now the device will reboot. So it will rectify any kind of issues you were having with your touch or suppose the screen was freezing, you were not able to use your navigation keys. All will be solved. My second tip would be about the car mode application. Usually there are a lot of cars coming with Android Auto which gives you the inbuilt functionality. But um, I really wanted to share this because I think it's a very good application by Samsung. It gives you a lot of benefits if you have a Bluetooth enabled car. So this is not a complete Android Auto mode but it gives you a lot of functionality of the Android Auto. It can easily connect with your car's Bluetooth and gives you a lot of basic function which you need while driving. So let me show you the application and what features it comes with. So when you enter the car mode application, it will take you to this screen. It definitely, you know, resembles the Android auto mode. So you get the basic functionality like making a telephone call, playing music, like Google Play Music or Samsung Messages, locations. Now locations can be enabled from here. Usually you enable the location before switch on this application. Find my car is also useful. Suppose you park your car in a congested parking and you forget where you park. So this find my car feature will give you the exact location of your car. So it will be easy for you to find it. Also from here you can go to the settings and change some settings. Google Maps of course, I mean, one of the best navigation tool. You have the Samsung music and play music. And also now with the S Pen Bluetooth, it's really fun to drive the car. You can just keep your S Pen with you to change the music, play, pause and something really unique. So you can leave your phone aside and do most of the things from your Bluetooth enabled S Pen. To come out of the car mode, you have to just click on the backspace. It will give you an option to close the car mode. Close it. So it will take you out of the application. So another small tip would be when you go in the settings, you go in the notification. Click on the app icon badge. So now you have an option, you can, you can choose show with number or show without the number. So when you choose show without number, it will show the notification with a small dot on the right side. But I prefer show with number because it will give you exactly like how many notification application has. For example, you have a WhatsApp. So if you have more than one notification, it will give you the exact numbers. But in case if you want, there is an option, you can just choose show without number. So it will just give you a small dot. So your screen will look more clean. But in terms of more practical usage, numbers will give you the exact idea. Now the fourth tip would be about a desktop mode. If you are familiar with Galaxy devices, you must be knowing this tip. But again, something very useful, especially if you have a large screen device. If you have a big device like Note 9 or Note 8 or Galaxy S9 Plus, I think you must use this functionality. So by default, you get the screen in the portrait mode. But you can enable in the settings to use the display in the desktop mode, which is good for a device like this size. Now, how do you do that? You go into the settings, you go in display, you go in home screen settings, and this is the option, portrait mode only. So if you click on portrait mode only, the device will only have the portrait mode option. So even if you turn the device, it will still be on portrait mode. 
for this size of device it's always advisable if you can use it in landscape mode so so you can go in the settings you can go in the home screen settings and once you disable the portrait mode only option you can use the device in the landscape mode now my tip number five would be about the edge lighting feature especially for notification it really looks visually very cool so when you go in the settings you just type in edge lighting and it will give you the edge lighting settings so it is enabled by default by samsung you can switch it off if you want to save your battery anyways it's not going to take much of the battery life but the feature is visually very eye pleasing and cool when you have a notification there are a lot of options you can choose it when screen is on you can choose when screen is off for me I'm, i prefer to use it always because galaxy note 9 has a 4000 mAh battery so i think this function is not going to take much of battery life now there are a lot of options this is by default when you go in the effects, you can choose multiple options. For example, multicolor option, the glow option. The glow will give you a subtle glow and the glitter. Also, if you want, you can change the transparency. You can also change the width, narrow, wide, as you like. So you can customize it as you like. So by default, it comes for messages and WhatsApp like basic applications but if you want you can enable it for all the applications so when you have notification for any of these applications you will get the edge lighting feature let me show you so for example when you receive a whatsapp notification you see this edge lighting so this is how it's gonna look like there's a very cool feature to turn your screen on go in the settings go to dextrity and interaction now there is an option of easy screen turn on so what it does when your screen is turned off you just put your hand above the screen and it will wake the screen you don't have to touch it so you don't have to touch the screen you have to just come near the screen and it will wake the screen i don't know why you're gonna use it but this is an option so if you want to use this feature you have to turn off the always on feature as both will not work together now the tip number seven would be about always on feature it's a very good tool given by samsung basically it's always giving you the information about your time the date so you go in the setting you enable the always on display and there are a lot of customization in this also so you can have just the home button and the clock or you can just have the clock also there is an option just to show the home button i don't know why you want to do that because basically always on is more about the time and the date also you can add any application for example reminder here so it will give you reminders on the screen there are a lot of options to customize it you will go in the settings and I have chosen the earth and the time and the date but you can choose from multiple options there are like huge options given by Samsung you can change the design of the clock also you can add a gif or gifs animated gifs also you can have the whole calendar widget on the always on screen also I like this one it's more like a GMT functionality of watches so it will give you time of two countries so this is the local time where you're living now and this is the time of maybe your home country or, or you can choose any country you know like so suppose you choose Riyadh you add it so it will give you date and time for local which is Dubai and Riyadh or you can choose any country then you have the edge feature this is what I've chosen a lot of other themes you can download from the Samsung App Store now the tip number eight i would like to talk about s pen i have made a separate video on s pen you can click over here to see that video and also i have a playlist of note 9 videos you can click over here to see those videos so there are a lot of cool features about s pen but one really unique thing about s pen is you can unlock your device by just your s pen so to use your s pen first we need to connect the s pen you go in the settings you press and hold you turn on it's showing disconnected to connect just put the s pen inside within seconds it will be connected so now it's connected now go into the settings manage s pen features so you see the s pen remote below that there is a unlock with s pen remote option you go over here you choose unlock with s pen remote press ok draw your pattern and done so now your screen is off and you would like to turn on the phone without using your fingerprint or biometric so when you click once it will unlock and when you keep pressing it will take you to the camera setting or any setting you can choose so click once it will unlock 
and when you press and hold it will take you to the camera I will definitely make another video in detail explaining all the features but this one I really wanted to share so this was the tip number eight now the tip number nine would be about the keyboard setting there are a lot of keyboards in Android you can download. For me personally, I like the Google keyboard. If you like Samsung keyboard, there are tons of options Samsung has given in the keyboard settings. Especially for a larger device like this, it is very intuitive. So suppose you go to the Chrome and you type anything. Now you must be wondering why my keyboard is in this color, in dark color. So this is a dark theme. So this is a dark theme you can apply in your keyboard. Just click on the settings here. So you have these options, smart typing. I always use the swipe control because it really makes it very fast to type something. Now here you choose the keyboard layout and feedback setting. And here you can choose any theme. When you click over here, you have these four options. You can choose a white theme. This is the one I'm using now. So these four themes comes by default. Suppose you like high contrast theme. Samsung is giving you that also. So that will make your keyboard look something like this. I think I prefer the dark theme. There are multiple options. Now another cool thing with this keyboard is like when you go to the keyboard size, you can increase or decrease the size. This is the maximum, this is the minimum. So if you have small hand, you can choose the minimum layout. And if you have big hands, you can choose the maximum layout. Also number keys are optional. So here there's no number. When you choose the number key, you will get the number option. I always prefer to choose number key because you don't have to go in another setting to find the numbers. So this is again a must have for any keyboard nowadays. But as I said, you can download any other keyboard from the Play Store. There are multiple options. Also something very similar to what iPhone has assistive touch. Samsung is giving you assistive menu. And this is not something new. I'm sure if you're using any other Samsung Galaxy devices, you have this option. So you go to the setting and you go to dexterity and interaction again. And this is the option, assistive menu. You just turn on the option. So this is the assistive menu. When you click on it, it will give you multiple options. So when you click here, you go to your recent applications, take you to the home screen, back. Then you have your notification panel. Also, there is a cursor. So you can take the cursor anywhere, for example, your Play Store, take the cursor here and just tap it, it will open the Play Store. Then you have the screen control, go up, go down, sides, and also you have your volume control here. You can lock the device, you can take a screenshot, also you can go to the device menu setting. Overall, it's a very good feature if you like it. For me, I personally don't want it, so I always switch it off. But again, it can be handy for people who want multiple controls. So this is something which we normally do on daily or weekly basis, a lot of screenshots. So the first way is just swipe your hand to take the screenshot, just like that. And the second option is you press the power and the volume down button at the same time take the screenshot hey Bixby take a screenshot Now the tip number 12 is actually a general tip about any Android device you're using, be it Note 9, Note 8, or can be a Pixel device, can be any Android device. Basically, it's to enable the developer option, which gives you a lot of other cool functionality. I have already enabled the developer option, but to enable it, you have to just go to the about phone software information and in samsung phone you need to click on the bill number 10 times or five times you need to click the bill number maybe five or ten times and when you click five times you will see the notification developer mode has been enabled when you go back you will find the developer mode option just below the about phone but basically you must enable developer option to give you some of the basic functionality like you can click on OEM unlocking to unlock your device or unlock the bootloader of the device if you want to root your phone. This is something you have to do to root your device. Also you can click on USB debugging to 
connect with any other device seamlessly. And what is the most important thing in this is you can make your Android more faster. Normally by default you have the animation scale, transition scale is turned on to 1x. So either you can turn it off to completely make your device super quick but if you still want some animation you can keep it animation scale to 0.5x which will give you animation but it will be more snappier this is something i always do in any android smartphone i use so this would be my last tip for this video as the video is becoming a bit longer now this is again a general tip for your galaxy devices and you should know this basically most of the samsung devices have a self-diagnostic test so you can perform a self-diagnostic test on any samsung device and get to know if you are facing any issues the most important thing is the LED panel or the LCD panel sometime when you're using the device for a long time or if the device fell down you might face issues from the side let me show you the menu first so you type in star hash o star hash now this is the menu now this is like a self-diagnostic tool you have in your Samsung device first of all when you get to this menu by typing star hash o star hash it also gives you a clean chit that the device is original authentic it's not a refurbished or a fake one you can test your red green blue but the most important thing is the touch basically what happens if your device fell down somewhere some part of the device touch might not work well and the samsung panels are really expensive suppose you get a device as a gift or something it's always good to perform this test If the device has any issues in the beginning you can check if you see my device the touch is working perfectly fine in all types of area also you can check the touch for your s pen especially the hovering test you see you see the s pen is working perfectly fine you're drawing something also there is a S Pen touch so I can write anywhere in the screen suppose this area is dead I will not be able to write here or suppose this area if it fell down sometime the OLED screen if it fell down this area can become dead so I will not be able to type here or write here anything so for any Samsung Galaxy device because the screens are half of the price of the phone this is something really cool you must do it when you get a new device or suppose you buy a second hand device this is something i will advise you to do it so guys that's all for this video i hope you like my tips and tricks i will continue making more videos for this amazing device also there is a giveaway going on till 10th of september for htc desire 12 plus you can click over here to see the links and detail about the giveaway and soon i'll be doing another giveaway for htc desire 12 so stay tuned and subscribe to my channel if you haven't see you in my next video till then goodbye and peace out i hope you enjoyed the video if you like the video kindly hit the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel i will really appreciate that also click on the notification icon the bell icon so you will constantly get updated with my new videos. Thank you for watching and see you in my next video. Till then, goodbye.